it's Wes. And today we have a video with a lot of mixed emotions. It is my review of the new Mikey 85 1.8. As always, we're gonna start with the categories with the build quality. This lens, as soon as you pick it up, it feels cheap. I mean, it doesn't cost a lot, so I guess, I mean, it should, but it feels like very hollow plastic. It reminds me a bit of the Tamron zooms, but it is, it is even lighter and cheaper feeling than that, obviously. We have a somewhat generic lens cap, but it works good. We have a somewhat generic lens hood, but also works good. They both feel good. On the back, now, yeah, unsurprisingly, we have no weather sealing. We have a USB micro port. Wish it was USB-C, that would be nice. For firmware updates, I have installed one firmware update on this lens since getting it. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. The front element is strangely flat and looks a bit odd. With this kind of sticker thing around it. The, the focus wheel, focus ring, feels incredibly cheap. It is plastic. <clears throat> Switch feels cheap. So anyway, the build quality is not great. It feels solid, but it also feels very cheap. And I'm gonna give that a 6.5 out of 10. Handling and usability. This lens is very light. Significantly lighter than the 85G Master. Also significantly lighter than, let's say, the Viltrox 85, which is also a low-cost third-party lens with autofocus. This has autofocus. Might surprise you, it has autofocus. Did I mention it has autofocus? It has autofocus. We also, unlike the Viltrox, we get an autofocus manual focus switch on the side, which turns out to be incredibly important. We'll get into that more later. We have the ability to install easy firmware updates, unlike the Sony first-party lenses, which are a complete pain in the butt to install. This one, plug it in, drop the firmware file on it, Bob's your uncle, that's it. Overall, I'm going to give this an eight out of 10. The most annoying thing when it comes to usability on this is the autofocus performance, which we can't talk about yet, and the focus ring, which feels like garbage, and if you squeeze it, it doesn't move. You have to lightly hold it and then move it. It's not well dampened, and it doesn't sound great. <laughs> Handling and usability though, eight out of 10. If it wasn't for that gross feel focus ring, then it would be higher. Image quality. I was not expecting very much from this lens with regards to image quality. Wide open, it is not shockingly sharp, but it is definitely usable. Stop down, it is decently sharp. It is not sh as sharp as, say, the Viltrox. It is not even close to as sharp as, say, the 85G Master or the 85 1.8 from Sony. But it is sharp enough, which is good. It is disappointing when someone goes through the trouble of making an autofocus lens that is not sharp enough. Color rendition is poor. Chromatic aberration control is terrible. If you're using this lens, we're gonna talk about this more in the next section with image character. If you're looking for accuracy and absolute sharpness, this is not the lens for you, but you probably already knew that getting into it. Image quality, I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. It was a bit of a debate between 6.5 and seven, but once you stop it down, it is good. Now, a lot of people wouldn't stop down much when they're using an 85 millimeter lens because they're looking to do wide open portraiture. Image character. Fantastic. <laughs> if you're shooting this lens at sunset, you're getting beautiful warm flares. Unlike the Sony lenses that'll often give you like green flares that are a bit ghastly. This is just beautiful and warm and rich and the chromatic aberration kind of gets crazy there, but the bokeh is smooth and buttery and just gorgeous. The image character on this lens is one of my favorite lenses ever made. And I do not say that lightly. I have been using this lens more than I normally would have, even for professional work, for the shots that I want to be dreamy and warm and flaring. Now, if that's not your style, don't even bother looking at this lens, but if you want something with fun, beautiful, dreamy effects, with autofocus, this will do the job for you. But again, if you're looking for accurate color reproduction, this won't do it. Things start to look a little bit greenish and yellowish, which is weird, which is unfortunate. But if you're flaring out, 
that works to its advantage and looks fantastic. Now here is where we get to the unfortunate part of this lens, autofocus. Yes, this is an autofocus lens. Yes, it is terrible. <laughs> this is the worst focusing autofocus lens I have ever used by far. A lot of the time it just won't lock focus and sometimes you'll get focus and it pulls out and then it goes back in and it pulls out and it goes back in. It's loud and annoying and unreliable. Don't even try using it for video. It's just a complete train wreck for autofocus. Now, I've had this lens for quite a while now and I've been holding off on issuing a review for it because I was hoping that they would come out with a firmware update, which is easy to install on this lens, that will make the autofocus more reliable. They came out with a firmware update. It didn't do much to improve it in my books. As I mentioned before, thankfully, there's an autofocus manual focus switch on this. So if you're having trouble, just switch it to manual and we have a very decent manual focusing experience from this lens. But should it be necessary? Not really. It's kind of a shame. There is definitely a chance that further on down the line, Mikey is going to come out with a firmware update for this lens that will, I don't want to say fix, but ameliorate the autofocusing experience, because honestly, it can't get any worse. When it gets focus, it gets it decently well. So it's not a one out of 10, it's not a zero, but it's a two. It's a two out of 10 for autofocus. This is so frustrating. Because as I said before, I love the rendition of this lens, but it is enormously annoying to use. <laughs> so that's our score. Let's move on to value. This lens is $200. And at that point, we get to a position where it all makes a lot more sense. The next cheapest full frame 85 mil autofocus lens for Sony is the Young Nuo at $345. That's almost twice as much. And you've got this, the Viltrox, which has decent autofocus and actually is better than the Sony 85G Master in low light. In good light, not as good as the 85G Master, but it focuses within a normal range of reliability. It's $400, it costs twice as much. It would hardly be honest to compare the two at that point with that big of a price difference. And then we have the Rokinon 85 1.4 for 550, and then you have the Sony equivalent, the Sony 85 1.8 for 600. That's three times the price to get worse image character. I hate the image character of that lens. I know a lot of people love the Sony 85 1.8. I think it looks terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry if you like that lens. It is so dry. The bokeh is swirly and sharp and nervous a lot of the time, unless you get the right background. And then obviously the G Master, which has a lovely rendition, is way more expensive. Obviously this lens is a 10 out of 10 for value. You, you can't get even close to this for an autofocus lens, which this barely is though. But in the future, hopefully they'll find a way to fix the autofocus on this. If they do, I will make a note both in the comments and the description below and let you know about those experiences. But as of right now, it's unfortunate. There you go. How, how do, where do we get for a rating on this? So we're so up and down and all over the place. That is, honestly, we got surprisingly high, 71.7%. That is halfway up my rating scale, even with the terrible handicap of the autofocus being so low. Kind of surprised it made it up that high. Let me know what you think about this lens. Is it worth buying at that low of a price, but with that unreliable of autofocus? Honestly, it's a tough call for me. <laughs> it is really tough, because I love the look of this lens. It's not the sharpest, but the rendition is just gorgeous. And for 200 bucks, I... there aren't a lot of lenses that look that that dreamy, that beautiful, especially for like sunset and flaring photos. If you wanna pick one of these up, there's gonna be a link down in the description for that to help support this channel and feed my fat cats. I wanna to talk to you about this lens because I am having a hard time deciding <laughs> which way to go. But until next time, let's go take some dreamy photos.